Hi! Today I will be drawing on black paper. I thought it would be cool to take on sort of a challenge, so instead of just drawing like I usually do, I will use inverse colors. So let's roll the intro and I will explain everything. So what do I mean by inverse colors? Say I want to draw a heart that's red. I will use a color that's on the opposite side of the color wheel. So probably this blue green. And now with a little trick, there you have it. Now it's red. Either way, I will be using colored pencils today. I have these swatches and I inverted them on my computer already so that I know what to use to achieve what color and not to have to guess. And I also prepared this sketch. It's a clown girl, but I will talk about it and everything else while I'm drawing already. So I want to start with her skin and for like a peachy color I see that I would probably need like a peacock blue or a Copenhagen blue and then for shadows the light cerulean blue. So let's start with these three colors. Now I'm gonna be honest I'm a little scared to do it because everything is literally reversed. So the shades will have to be the lightest, that's why I am starting with this. So then I can build on the darker colors, which in reality will be lighter. The reason why I picked a clown girl for today's drawing is because I wanted to use a lot of colors. And clowns are usually, you know, very colorful. I'm also aware that clowns are a popular topic now, so I was like, yeah, why not? I also know that the internet likes pretty girls and I like to draw them, so everything checks out. I definitely don't want to just leave this to pure luck, so I will probably start pausing the video and like key moments just so that I I know if what I'm doing is right. Oh, and I also forgot to mention what paper I'm using. So I'm using the Strathmore black paper and so far I really like it. I like how the pencils just glide on it and how vibrant they look. Going into this challenge, I didn't really know what to expect. I was definitely scared of the colors not showing up properly because they do look different on a regular white paper versus a black paper. And I do kind of have a problem with laying colors down even on a white paper. I always go too light, so I had to consciously make myself press the pencil harder. Another difficulty was that when I took pictures to check if the colors look fine in negative, it was hard to tell because of the glare on the paper, so I had to tweak some things in Snapseed every time I wanted to check it, and that was just like taking me out of the drawing process, you know, and it felt like I was wasting time. But then I think it was worth it because I'm a control freak and if I didn't check it a few times and the drawing didn't turn out how I wanted to, I'd be really upset. So I am glad I did that. And even now looking at the footage, it also looks a bit different than the actual piece that I am looking at in front of me. But putting this negative filter over the video, I tried to color correct it to the best of my ability so that you can see it for what it really is. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now that her skin here is done, I think I want to go ahead and finish this bottom portion of the drawing. So I will do her shirt or a dress or whatever it is. And I want it to be blue, so maybe like a golden rod and burnt ochre will work. But I think the biggest challenge was the shadows are highlights and highlights are shadows situation. It just hurt my brain to think where it has to be light and dark and then invert it in my head. And obviously I did make some mistakes. I did make sort of a mock-up of the colors that I wanted the drawing to be and then inverted it to help me a little and it did but I still needed a lot of my brain power for the drawing to turn out okay. It was also very unnatural for me to work from shadows to highlights but this is what I like to do with most of my supplies work from the lightest to darkest color. Thankfully though, colored pencils are nice in that way that you don't really have to worry that you won't be able to layer a lighter color on top of a darker one, unlike with, say, watercolors. Unless you lay it down really hard, which you're not really supposed to do anyway. So I just kept layering and layering until I deemed it appropriate and I did keep in mind that I had to put them down really hard in the end to make the color show up. So clowns were face paint, right? And usually it's white, but obviously there are shadows and highlights. So unfortunately for me, I can't just have her face not painted. So what I will do is I'll use the same pencils as for the body and I'll just use them lighter and I think that will be the best that I will be able to do to achieve the effect that I want. So this seemed pretty straightforward in theory. Leave most of the face untouched lightly color in some places, add a little eyeshadow and lip color, right? Wrong. I couldn't quite achieve the effect that I wanted. Everything I did looked weird. I did want to have it look like the paint rubbed off of her face a little, but not so much. But I did go in afterwards and improved it and it turned out better. Okay, now it's time to draw the hair and I think this will be the hardest part of today's drawing because because not only do I want it to be in all the colors of the rainbow, it's also really curly and curly hair is really hard to draw with normal colors and I can't imagine how hard it will be in reverse colors, but let's try it. And I want to go from purple to green. So actually, I'm going to be drawing from green to purple. What I decided to do with the hair in the end was make little circles and hope for the best, honestly. For the first half, I started with the darker color because I thought that would look better and that it would be easier to layer the lighter color on top. And yes, it was easier, but it didn't look as good as I wanted it to. So for the second half, I did the opposite. First, I lightly layered the lighter color and then I did it harder where there should be more shadows. And then I put the darker color pencil on top of that. See, even talking about it and trying to explain it hurts my brain. After doing the hair, 
only thing that was left was the hat, which was easy. I thought it would be much harder, especially the pom-poms, but it wasn't, so I guess there's that. For the line art, I had two options to choose from, a white pencil or a white gel pen. And first, I tried them both out in a rather inconspicuous part of the drawing and I decided to use the pencil because it was just laying down better. I don't know, I always struggle with gel pens, they refuse to work on colored pencils, it's dumb. Alright, I believe this is it. And it turned out better than I thought it would in the end. And I mean both the one that I have here in front of me and the negative. I would definitely recommend trying this challenge for yourself because it's fun, even though it might hurt your brain just a little. But anyway, thank you for watching and as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye!